Uh, right now, 54. Nice. All right, here we go. So um, I'll share my screen and boom. And All right, here we go, y'all. So um, before I get, uh, you know, get started, I'll just kind of talk about what it is I'll be kind of going over today. As you guys can see over here, I just have a bunch of clips. It's pretty much press man. Um, you know, I know you guys have gone over today. You guys are going over some, you know, you told me like uh, Palm stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of people play a lot of off, but I, I think press, when people go to camps, uh, when, you know, a lot of teams, there's not a lot of off man. And maybe if we do this again, I'll get into some off man stuff. But right now, the, we're going to go over some press and then just some things that kind of like I teach. And hopefully, like with some of your guys' questions, maybe I can learn something from you guys because I'm somebody, I, you know, I got to play at a high level, but I don't know everything. I'm always learning. I'm always trying to learn. So, you guys ever have any questions? You guys think, hey, man, you can add this to it or little cues? Because there's one thing I'll, you guys would probably hear me say a lot. And I got that from my buddy, one of my buddies um, that I used to play with. And he, it was a verbal cue that made me really, I always remember it and it made sense. So um, hopefully you guys can learn something from this. Hopefully um, I can learn something from you guys as well. But here we go, we'll get started. All right, so with the first clip, First clip is Byron Jones. All right, now, the, the, I think everybody knows his, his base is a little narrow, which is fine. Like, if you, can, if you can play like that, he's probably going to kick step a little bit. If you can play with a narrow base, that's fine. I usually like mine a little wider because the first thing you do typically is widen your feet but not, not too wide, right? You can't be too wide uh, to where you lose like all your kind of like leverage. So um, obviously I think, you know, the basic thing as far as, you know, your stance and your alignment, uh, depending on where the guy is lined up, here he's lined up outside the numbers, the ball is over to the right. So he could actually slide over a little bit more to, to uh, Michael Thomas's right and really split down the middle, but th this is fine. Now, there are different techniques that people teach. They teach, uh, you know, there are a bunch of different techniques. There's the, the motor, you know, motor, like feather, uh, there's kick step, um, all these different like terminology. Me, the one thing I like to like really beat is play basketball, right? So, you know, we teach all these different things and all that, but at the end of the day, we're playing basketball. If I'm, if I'm guarding, you know, any of you guys at the top of the key, I'm going to try to stay as square as possible, right? And the last thing I want to do is really open the gate and let you just run by me and, you know, get to the uh, bucket. So I want to stay square. And if you do, I want to stay square as much as possible. I want to flatten this route off as much as possible. So at the end of the day, I really don't want to give ground because I want to make this guy, if I, if I can make you run a one-step slant, I want you to run a one-step slant. I don't want to give ground to where now you run at me and you dictate the depth that you want to run, right? So we'll see right here in this first clip, you'll see Byron Jones. Byron Jones dictates the route depth by Michael Thomas. He does a really good job here. Michael Thomas isn't able to move him. You see that? We'll go back, start it over again. I wish I could slow it down somehow. That's really good. That's textbook. And then you just wash them down. And then you just wash them down. Look, look, like right here, he's still inside of his frame. He did get wide. Remember I said the feet ended up getting a little bit wide. Um, that's why I, I try to start a little bit from a more uh, wider base, not too wide, but his base is like really narrow. Um, but shoot, we can't even see Byron Jones because he didn't motor out. He didn't back out. And I know a lot of people teach that. That's fine. I, I typically use that as a tool if somebody's like super quick or super elusive or whatever. Um, but he didn't back out. He dictated the receiver's route depth. And his route depth here was one yard. Flatten him off, wash him down, break the ball. Now, I know you guys are probably like, hey, he got there a little early. He got there a little early, whatever. They ain't caught it. Pass break up here. That's good. This is good stuff right here. Didn't give any ground. 
had active feet though. First thing he did, he moved his feet. Look, feet moving, good. Shoots the hand, stabs, comes in, breaks up the ball. I'll, I'll show it one more time. That's good, that's good, that's good. All right, hold on. Do I wanna get to this one yet? Oh no, stop the screen share, hold on. All right, here we go. All right, so that was the first, that was the first clip. All right, here we go, the second clip. More of the same, more of the same. We don't see a motor out, he dictates. He dictates the receiver and how wide he has to take it. Now I know a lot of things, everybody's like, hey man, if you're, if you're gonna if you're gonna be up at the line, get hands on, which he does end up getting hands on. But sometimes, if we're right here, right, he has really good feet, good active feet. If you play like this, sometimes the receiver might just take a speed release, and you won't be able to get hands on. So I know a lot of times we want to preach, hey, hands on, hands on, hands on. But sometimes, man, if if you if you don't give ground and he has to take a speed release way outside. You did your job. That's just as good as getting hands on, in my opinion. Now, the one thing you do want to be careful of here, he shoots both hands. And a lot of times that'll lock your hips. See how he kind of had the whip open? Because he shot that, you know, typically, especially if you're outside, I mean, if you're inside shade, I don't want to really shoot my outside hand because if he gets outside of me, it's going to lock that hip. And you can see his hip locked and he has to kind of whip open. It, now he recovered very well, he recovered very well, but if I'm nitpicking, if I'm nitpicking, I, I don't want him to shoot that outside hand. Now, when is it okay to shoot your outside hand and press? Well, one, if I'm already lined up, if I'm lined up outside shade and I'm protecting the outside, that's cool. But if I'm lined up inside shade like he is here and I wanna shoot that outside hand, typically how I teach it is, I'll bring that, I'll bring the outside hand if I have him controlled already with my inside hand, right? So if he's trying to come inside, I shoot my inside hand, he's controlled, then now I can bring that outside hand. And he wasn't able to do that, and you can kind of see his hip get locked. See him have to hop and, and turn over it. So we want to prevent that. So the way to prevent that, don't shoot that outside hand. But everything else is really good. The really good eye discipline, right? When do you look back? Okay, I'm running with them. I have them controlled. I look, make a play on the ball. That's good stuff. You'll see a few uh, clips from the Patriots because I really like what they do, um, their cornerbacks between JC Jackson, who has another clip on here, I believe. Actually, he has a few clips on here, and Stephon Gilmore. So again, um, just from this, you know, if, if, we're, if we're teaching, if we're nitpicking, right, I like the active feet, make the receiver work, Laterally at the line of scrimmage. Don't shoot the outside hand unless you have the receiver already controlled with the inside hand because it locks the hip, as you can see. And then he does a good job here. Hand fighting, getting in phase, making the play on the ball. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. All right, here we go. Um, and go ahead, you know, interrupt me if you ever, if anybody has any questions or you know anything. <clears throat> now I showed two uh, that I really like. I showed two plays that I really like. Now this is one, and it's a little tougher. All right, it's a little tougher because you know he's way inside the numbers. See the numbers, the last couple of reps, you know guys have been outside the numbers. Here, Devontae Adams, he's inside the numbers. So you know he inside the numbers, he has a legit two-way go. He can go this way, he can go that way. There's a lot of field, all right? So what we wanna do, we have to play this a little bit more honest. And typically how, how ideally, and I always say ideally because I know, you know, there's no perfect rep, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, there are some like that are really good, but it's not always gonna be perfect. It's not always gonna be perfect. Obviously we, we wanna strive for perfection, but it's not always gonna be perfect. Now, 
I, I, ideally, I would like to be a little bit more head up when he has all this space to this side and this side. I, I just have to play it a little bit more honest. But what I don't want to do is this. I can't do that. You know, um, he didn't really give uh, Buster anything. But the first thing he did was open up. Now, a, a, a wise coach, a, a coach, a coach once told me, you, you, you can take away something, but be ready to run to something. So if Buster's screen is going to take away inside with his body like this, you have to be ready to run. Take away something, run to something. But really all he did was give Devontae Adams, let's see, like, Devontae Adams, he really just runs straight here. So that's not, <laughs> that's not ideal. You can't let, look, he just runs straight. We can't let that happen. So obviously, I mean, we all know here he opened the gate. But if you are going to open the gate, which is not ideal, but again, no rep is perfect, or it's not always going to be perfect. Take away something, run to something. So if I'm going to take away inside, I got to be ready to go. And Devontae Adams, I know he's not known to be a burner, but his first step is lethal. And he can burst by you with that first step. It's kind of like Carmelo Anthony, right? Like Carmelo Anthony, he, he's not known to be the quickest, you know, the crazy, craziest ball handling skills in the NBA. But one thing that Carmelo Anthony has, he has that quick first step. And that's what Devontae Adams has. He's gone. So again, uh, don't open the gate, take away something, run to something, you know? Again, no, it's not always going to be perfect, every rep. Take away something, run to something. Now, what I do like here, though, is, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to talk about, you know, I try to take, like, a, a positive out of everything. He did have good eyes. And good eye discipline at least puts you in position to uh, possibly make a play on a pass that's underthrown or, you know, whatever. All right, so he doesn't look back. That, that's good, because if he looks back, all he's going to do is the gap is going to get even uh, further. He never looked back, and look, he tried to play through the hands. So if I am, excuse me, if I am going to take a positive from this, I will say I did like how Buster uh, Screen finished. I did like how he finished. He didn't look back, tried to play through the hands, that's good. That's good eye discipline there. So obviously a rep, I'm pretty sure he would like back, but those were things that, uh, you know, the, the ending, I, I like that. I like that part. But don't, don't open the gate. And if you do, be prepared to take away something, run to something. All right. All right, here we go. Now <laughs> you can see what happened here. Um, there's this phrase I talked about. I took a phrase from one of my buddies. And the phrase is dick to hip. All right, dick to hip. And it's really just what it sounds, right? We want to get dick to hip on a receiver, meaning I don't want to get upfield shoulder. All right. I want to play more of that lower shoulder or, you know, to the hip, dick to hip, right? I want to play dick to hip. So in a situation like this, the receiver has to fight through me. All right. Now, somebody asked earlier, what's the number one thing you look for in your cornerback? Well, you got to be able to run. And if I'm a cornerback and, you know, say if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a scout or whatever, a GM, and I draft this guy, this is Dante Johnson right here working against uh, Des Bryant. So if I'm, a, if I'm a GM and I, and I draft Dante Johnson, who was drafted to play cornerback for the Niners uh, in the fourth round, like 2015 or something like that, 14, somewhere around there. Um, I believe Dante Johnson can run. So if you can run, you have to be more patient at the line of scrimmage. Being more patient makes it so I have a, I can get more, what I say, dick to hit. So we know receiver, this is good, not bad. Okay, here, look, Dez is already moving. He's not moving, cool. Yeah, you don't gotta be flat-footed. 
I like to be a little bit more on the uh, balls of my toes, but it's cool. He's not moving yet. That's cool. But what he does is he gets in a rush. He gets in a rush. Now he's on his heels. Look, he's on his heels. We're on his heels. We don't want to be on our heels. We want to play on your toes. And then here, Dez does a good job of selling it. Now, now this is another thing too. Receivers, they get paid too, right? So they get paid to, you know, make this guy feel like he's in the panic. But get upfield, if you're the receiver, DB, we don't want to get upfield. Be in the pit. We want to make the quarterback throw the deep ball. Why, right? I'm asking why, like you guys can respond right now. We want to make the quarterback throw the deep ball because that's the lowest percentage pass a quarterback can attempt. Again, that is the lowest percentage pass a quarterback can attempt. So most of the time, when they throw this deep ball, it, you know, it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be perfect. More times than not, it's not going to be perfect. They, they slightly throw anything. So you, you, you're likely going to be in position to make a play on the, on the deep ball. But, we don't, but we, what we don't want to give up, we don't want to give up the easy comebacks. We don't want to give up the easy slants. We don't want to uh, give up the easy curl routes. And how we can make it tougher on the receiver is if we're not in a rush to defend the deep ball and we play more dick to hit. So try not to get going upfield too much, as we saw here from Dante Johnson. Now, he, he recovered well, but he didn't have to even be in this position. Don't get too far upfield shoulder. Make the receiver have to come back through you. Make him have to fight through you. Make him have to fight back through you. That's a good move by Des. Don't get up Phil's shoulder. Don't get up Phil's shoulder. Be a little bit more patient. He should be like right here. He should be right here. So by the time Des is coming to stick his foot in the ground and come back, now you're going to have to fight back through me. And from that uh, point, you should be able to wash him down and then make a play on the ball. It's not terrible, but it could have been, it could have been better. These are all just teaching points. Again, uh, I know that, you know, all reps are not, are not going to be perfect. These are all just teaching, teaching points. All right, here we go. Same game. Same game. Now, Witherspoon does a terrific job of recovering. But again, he's heading upfield. He's heading upfield. Look, he's heading upfield. Dez is coming back underneath you. Be a little bit more patient. Again, dig to hip. Work to get to that hip. If you work to get to that hip, he's going to have to fight through you. He's going to have to fight through you. You don't have to get upfield shoulder. Now, again, these are all things that just I teach kids, right? You're a cornerback. You can run. Witherspoon, the kid is 6'3", 200 pounds. And you run a 4'4", 5 at the combine. He has terrific deep ball speed. Trust it. Trust it, because I can tell you what, Spoon, Des Bryant's not going to outrun you. So why be in a rush to defend Des on the goal route? And that's the lowest percentage throw a quarterback can attempt. Why not be more patient at the line of scrimmage? Okay, he wants to give me all this. He wants to give me all that. All right, whatever. I'm still going to be patient. And if you try to come back underneath on the slant, you're going to have to come through me. And that's going to be a lot more difficult for the receiver. Now, I think Spoon, I, I think he has terrific uh, fluidity. And he was able to recover and make a play on this ball. Again, I'm kind of just nitpicking here. Just to, you know, just some uh, talking points, some coaching points. That's a, it's not a bad rep by him. It just could have been better. So I'm just talking about coaching points. Don't get too far upfield. That was a good job by Witherspoon getting back in position to be able to contest this. This was third down, though. That's a good job by Dennis Bryant. Another thing, don't shoot and miss. Lock that hit. So again, as he's going, if he's going to go vertical here, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. If you go vertical, I can run with you. Be a little more patient. Don't be in such a rush to get up field shoulder. All right. All right, let's see. I'll have some 49er clips because as I was going through, um, as I was going through and uh, making these, like, I'm a 49er fan. I watch every 49er game. So just I remember certain plays and 
key little moments or whatever like that just I don't know I, I I'm kind of weird like that where defensive plays all these clips are just plays I like kind of banked away in my memory and I was able to go back and find them and I pretty much knew exactly when they happened <laughs> in that game so um we have Dante Johnson again again here he's good here all right good now get comfortable Dante Johnson again you can run now what is he he's already what too far upfield shoulder what I say, we want to make him throw the goal route. Throw the goal route. Dante Johnson, 6'2". He's a legit 6'2". 205 pounds, and he can run. Throw the goal route. I'm going to be more patient. I want to be more dick to hip. Right now, that dick is not on that hip. He's way too – he's too far upfield to be on that hip. What I say we want to take away, this is not bad. But, again, be a little bit more on that hip because what do they want to do? They want to get you going upfield. Go ahead. Go ahead, Johnson. Go upfield so I can do this. And now he has a 15-yard gain. We don't want to be in this position here. But how could he have done a little bit better? Make the guy have to fight back through you. This is not bad. He's actually doing a good job of reading him down. That head is down. But be more addicted to hit. So when he gets to this point, I'm not in front of him. Now, again, receivers, they get paid too. So it's a good job by uh, Aiken. I believe his name is Aiken. But we want to be more addicted to hip so we don't end up in this position. One more time. So again, dick to hip. Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush to get upfield. Make them throw. If you want to throw the lowest percentage pass, which is the go route, go ahead and throw that. But I'm not going to give up the 15-yard comeback. I'm not going to give up the 15-yard curl. I'm not going to give up the slants. I'm not, I don't want to give up the digs. Those are all higher percentage passes, much higher. This here, that's a much higher. Look, this is a much higher percentage throw. And then look, bad eyes here. You, you got something to say? Coach, yeah, I was asked, uh, what about slower guys who can't run? Well, okay, so I don't want to um, – I don't want to sound like an asshole, but if, if you're slower and you can't run, corner might not be – depending on the, the levels that you're, you're, you're going, right? Because right now I'm talking about NFL guys. Um, I probably have a lot of high school coaches in here. If, if your guy is slower and you know he's slower, then yeah, he, he can play a little bit more upfield shoulder. Or even if I'm a guy, right, say I'm Dante Johnson, and maybe I ran a 4-4-5 four, four, or 4-4-8, four, four, whatever he probably ran. But I'm guarding Tyreek Hill. I'm probably going to play a little bit more upfield shoulder. All right? So in those kind of instances, it's okay to kind of, you know, tweak your uh, technique a little bit. But ideally – if, if my corner can run, which you likely would like your corner to be able to run, I, I, I need him, hey, force the, force the deep throw. Force the deep throw. That's the lowest percentage pass they can, they can uh, attempt. But I don't want to give up the high percentage throws, the curls, the comebacks, the digs, the slants. Another question here, Coach. Uh, is there an exact, uh, exact depth during the route where you tell your corners to transition from dick to hip to upfield shoulder? So um, I was talking with Eric Davis. Um, you know, he used to play with the 49ers. And typically I say when you, when you have the receiver controlled, you can look. Now, I try to do what I call like process of elimination. So after they pass five yards, I know it's not a five-yard stop. I'm still reading the guy down. I'm still looking at that hip, right? After he passes 10 yards, I know it's not a 10-yard stop. Now, depending on the, the level, the age level, right? You might get a 15-yard stop. So like, you know, college, NFL, you'll get deeper stop routes. So even then, it's not safe to look yet and really play that upfield shoulder. Um, but what Eric Davis told me was some guys just have a feel for it. And you can kind of feel a guy's body. You know, if anybody that played cornerback a lot, you can feel when is this guy about to sit it down, you can just kind of feel their body. Like, oh, he's about to sit down. Like, you know, you can just feel it. And it's like the longer you play the position, it's something you can just, you kind of just have a feel for. It. So there is no exact depth when I'd say look back. It does kind of depend on the level in which you're playing. And in the pros, it's a little deeper. 
probably around 15 yards where you want to be like, you know what, I think this, I think this is the route he's committing to. And now I want to kind of, you know, man turn and maybe look at the ball. But uh, at the younger levels, probably about 10 yards. After 10 yards, you can probably like look and lean. There's one more question here, Coach. Do you have a, a clip to show how close you like the, the dick to hip technique? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to those. I'll get to those. So here we go. I'll get to the next one now. All right, so Johnson. Uh, All right, here we go. We got, we got Johnson here. See, this was good. This was good. And even with the guy getting a step on him, remember what I said, man. Look, that's good. Look, look at his patience at the line of scrimmage. Good. Hands on. He's reading them down. Look, that's dick to hip right there. That's dick to hip. So if he does do a curl route, now he's going to have to fight through Jason, uh, JC Jackson. Now he even gets a step on Jackson. But what did I say? Man, the deep balls are the lowest percentage pass a quarterback can attempt. More times than not, is not perfect. So yeah, the receiver, which is John Ross, right? Ran a 4-2-2 or whatever John Ross ran, 40 at the combine. All right, John Ross had to step on him. Okay, but guess what? Quarterbacks, a lot of times, they don't make the perfect pass deep. Make a play on the ball, interception. All right, so again, read him down. Now, if he's able to read down a guy that ran a 4-2-2, and I know J.C. Jackson, he didn't run a 4-2-2. He didn't run 4-3s. He probably barely ran 4-4s. But he still tested, trusted his technique enough to where, okay, I'm guarding him. I got hands on. I'm winding him down. I don't have to get too far up to his shoulder. And go get the ball. One more time. Good. Hands on, reading him down. When you see the shoulders like this, that means he's reading them down. So when you see that, He's reading them down right now. So even though he's not uh, exactly dick to hip, even from this start that I would like, because right now if Ross ran a slant, he might be able to beat him inside. But he does have his head and shoulders down anticipating anything that might happen right now. You see the shoulders like this, he's anticipating. He's anticipating a stop route. He's anticipating uh, maybe he's going inside. When you have the shoulders down and, and, you're, and you're reading down and, and the head down at that angle, He's reading down the receiver. Okay, now I feel like he's committing to it, but if he does stop, he has to fight through me. That's good. Good, hand fighting, good. And go high point the ball. That was a really good play by J.C. Jackson. And obviously it probably helps to have your safety coming over the top as well. All right, let's see. We'll get into some, um, if you're even. All right, now he opened the gate a little bit. He's good here. They're pretty even. If Devontae Adams wants to do anything in breaking, he's gonna have to fight through Kevin Tolliver here. Now, this is one thing that is, when you're a student of the game, you gotta know who you're playing against, right? So I know, okay, I'm playing against Aaron Rodgers. I'm playing against Devontae Adams. What do they like to do? If I'm even, what's coming? Back shoulder throw. So what you want to do to defend a back shoulder throw, look through the receiver. Look through the receiver. So you can get your hands on, right? They're not going to call anything. This is really just contact between both guys. As you get your hands on, I can look through the receiver. That means like face him and look back through him. But I know where he's at because now he can't fade away from me to get the back shoulder throw. If, De if Devontae Adams tries to fade away to get the back shoulder throw, guess what? Tolliver will go with him. So this is really good, if you're trying to defend that back shoulder throw. Now, you obviously, you don't want the ball to go off your helmet. But look at that. That's good. That's good. That's good fighting right there. So this is more, um, you know, after the press, what do I do down the line, right? If, if, and this is a good key. It depends on what level you guys are at. And I think they're teaching it more at younger levels too. I coach at Edison High School in Stockton and we'll teach this. We work on the back shoulder throws. If a guy is even with you, 
throw the back shoulder. And a lot of times the guys would turn to get his eyes around the other way. The DB will continue to drift upfield and the receiver will fade to the sideline and catch that back shoulder fade. Now, how you defend that? Again, get your hands on, look through the receiver. Look through the receiver. Now, the tough thing with uh, the tough thing with looking through the receiver, you can't defend both. Typically, you can't. I've seen like a couple guys be able to defend both. When I say both, you, it's hard to defend the go route. And dang, I should have got this clip from um, Jackson from uh, the Carolina Panthers guard Antonio Brown, where he tried to defend the back shoulder throw because he was even with. Antonio Brown, but Big Ben still threw it out there, and it slowed Jackson up. AB caught it for a touchdown. But you can't do this, and the guy is really throwing the goal route because then you'll end up – you'll see there's some separation. At, there'll be some separation at the top. But this is a good job by – not so much at the front. Gave a little ground, feathered out too much, but got to him. Good. Great finish. Got his eyes around, hands on, look through the receiver. That's good stuff. All right, here we go. Same thing here with Stephon Gilmore. Good, good, hands on, good, good. Now he looks right away and look it, hands on the receiver. Once you get the hands on the receiver, trust me, the receiver's gonna fight back too. So it's just going to be incidental contact by both guys or hand fighting by both guys. It's not a flag. Now you just go up and make the play. Good. Now, one thing that I, I think this was a great, terrific rep from Stefan Gilmore. One thing I think that Gilmore can improve. I mean, look, I, I think Gilmore is the best cornerback in the NFL. But he has a tendency to play flat footed and on his heels. So shoes, I think Gilmore, as great as he is, the best cornerback in the league, uh, I, I think he is, uh, he has the most responsibility of any cornerback in the league. He follows wide receiver ones pretty much every game. Uh, the Patriots play a ton of press man, like a ton. I really love what they do there. Uh, but he can get even better if he doesn't play as flat footed as he is here. Look at that, like, you know, first thing he did, pop his feet, wide base. But he still does a good job, getting hands on, reading down the receiver. He knows he's even with him. What comes when the, uh, you're even with the receiver? Back shoulder. Gets his hands inside. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. We'll watch it one more time. Hands on. Look through the receiver. That's going to eliminate that back shoulder throw. Good job. And he dictated this. The, the, the quarterback, the quarterback is anticipating. The quarterback is anticipating Stephon Gilmore being more upfield shoulder. So if, if, if he's more upfield shoulder and he gets going upfield, this ends up being a good pass, but he doesn't. Gets his hands on, looks inside. Looks through the receiver. That's good stuff. Now I know, uh, here we go, on the goal line. Same thing. Does a good job. Doesn't widen out too much. I mean, doesn't uh, back out to create the space. All right, you got Ramsey against uh, uh, Kevin Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin, you know, he's like 245, six foot five. You got Ramsey here. Um, you know he's going to try to get physical with you. He's not going to beat you with quickness, right? He's going to try to beat you with strength. So a lot of this too, look, I mean, look how soon he looks back. He gets hands on and he knows this ball is probably coming now. They call offensive pass interference, by the way. Hands on and still play through the ball. Watch one more time. Hands on. Look through them, play through the hands. Hands on. And this is like my number one technique in the, in the red zone. Um, I don't think I would defend a fade ball any other way, especially inside the five. 
Uh, I'd always say hands on, look through the receiver. Uh, when you turn your back to the receiver and, and look towards the quarterback, that gives uh, the receiver the opportunity to hit you with that chicken wing and kind of push off and fade to the ball. I should have, I should have gotten an example of that. This is good. So last one. Look, he's already getting ready to look. Hands on. I have him controlled. I know the ball is coming. Okay, they call OPI. Doesn't matter. I'm going to fight through even that contact and make a play on the ball. Good stuff by Jalen Ramsey. Obviously one of the best corners in the NFL as well. All right, now let's talk about eye discipline from press. All right. Now, yeah, Jackson here, he's in the slot. Remember, the Patriots do a lot of matchup stuff. So if Beasley's outside, he's probably going to be have Jackson on him. Beasley inside, he's probably going to have Jackson on him. All right. So this is cool. Now, Jackson gives up the catch here. But the, the thing I want to applaud him for right now, he knows I have to get to the receiver. And I'm pretty sure coaches out there, you guys deal with this. Probably the number one issue um, that we have with our young cornerbacks a lot of times is bad eye discipline. That's probably the, I'd say young, young DBs, um, especially starting from a young kid, if you can get a kid early, really coach it out of them, it's, it's the eye discipline. He gave himself an opportunity to make a play on this ball because he had good eye discipline. He never looked back. So even though he made, he made the, uh, the catch, you're going to put yourself in position to be able to break this pass up if you do it right all the time. So it's like, hey, you know, at the end of the day, like I said earlier, the receivers, you know, they get paid too. So if he makes this play, okay, you, you got me. But keep your technique. Keep your technique. And I'll, and I'll show you why now. I'll show you why now. Why you want to keep your technique? Here we go. Same guys, same matchup here. Look at that. Look at that separation right here. Now, what do our kids do in this situation? They want to look back at the quarterback. Man, the quarterback's not throwing to you. He's throwing to him. So, what does he do a good job of here? He never looks back and and goes to play through the hands. Never looks back. Look at that. Look at those eyes. So, okay, you got me on the other one, but you know what? I, I, that's not going to deter me from playing with good eye discipline. This is really good eye discipline here by J.C. Jackson. Look at this. I'll pause it at the top of that last one so you guys can see the eyes. Look, there's space right there. Again, what do our kids want to do? They want to look back right here. Hey, don't look back. Play through the hands. Look at that. Look at his eyes. Where are his eyes? He's not looking back. I think we need kids to see this. I'm pretty sure you coaches feel me on this one. Look at the eyes. That's good stuff. Boom. Pass breakup. Now you're the hero. One more time. I, I really wanted to show this specifically for, and you know what? Let's talk about his, his at the line of scrimmage. Now, Again, remember I was talking about Buster Screen. You know, when, when you have a guy that's lined up in either a tight split or in a slot, you have to play more honest because the guy has a two-way go. But he didn't give him one way or the other. Look, he play, he he tried to play as, as square as he want. Now look what Beasley has to do. Beasley has to widen out. Remember, we want to dictate what you do, right? Yeah, I don't want Beasley to be able to just push straight up and break out. I want to dictate what Beasley does at the line of scrimmage. I want to make, okay, you're going to have to widen out your release. Okay, oh, he broke his route off. Maybe thought the slot fade was coming. Slot fade's not coming, it's the out route. It's cool. I'm going to drive it with good eye discipline. I'm going to break up this pass on third down, get off the field. 
Let's get started. All right. So those are for for the most part um, just some of the press men I want to talk about. I have a oh, I'll talk about this one real quick first. Now here, I, I think he got too far upfield shoulder. He got too far upfield from the jump. He won't feel it now. Maybe he knew that this was coming. But what does he do at the end? And you know, let's talk about what he does here. Eyes down. So he's still anticipating. If you're gonna do a stop route, he knows where the sticks are. Johnny needed the first down here. It was third and ten. Hands on. All right, get hands on. I talk about that. Look through the guy, right? Now, now again. This is what happens when you don't get too far upfield shoulder. You're going to have to fight back through me on this. Now he gets in the position. Damn, he threw it up. Okay, he's going up and get it. What am I going to do? Don't panic. And a lot of our kids, for whatever reason, they just go to the body. Don't go to the body. Play through the hands. It's tough. Don't go to the body. Play through the hands. Good job. Okay, it's not what I expected. Play through the hands. He was expecting a, uh, he was expecting a, uh, a five-yard stop, a ten-yard stop. He was expecting those. He wasn't expecting that fade, and that's why at this point, when he looked through, oh, he's throwing more upfield. Okay, so I'm I'm in a vulnerable position. Play straight through the hands. That's good. You know, I didn't care for his work at the line of scrimmage, but again, it's not always going to be perfect. I thought he did a tremendous job. Uh, playing through the hands there. All right. And then here are going to be a couple of uh, two-man reps and kind of how I teach it at the line of scrimmage. Two-man now, this is the one time where, especially if I'm, on the, if I'm on the outside and we're in two-man, I know I have a safety help almost directly over me, right? I have a deep half safety. And depending on if we're, it's a true uh, bracket, um, I know I'm going to have a safety pretty much right over the top of me, right? Uh, patrolling that deep half. So I 100% now do not need to get up field shoulder. Matter of fact, I can really just open the gate to, to force him outside. And from there, I'm really just working to get in the trail position. So I can play um, off. I mean, not off. I'm at the line of scrimmage. I can open up. Go ahead. You can get a free release up field because I'm just going to be comfortable. I'm going to be relaxed. And I'm going to get in a trail position. Um, ideally, I want to put my hand on your back. And I just want to read wherever you're going. I want to read the receiver down. I don't need to look back. So look, hand on the back. He's reading the receiver down. You cut in, I cut in. Oh, you cut back up? Okay, I cut back up. This, like, this safety almost screwed this whole thing up. But this is terrific. That's Eli Apple there. Reading them down, good. That's how two-man is done. Now, I know some people um, use two man to get, to tell your guy to be more physical at the line of scrimmage, and that's great. If that's what you teach, that's great. Um, kind of how I was taught, and what I think is like super effective, because the last thing I want to do, I don't want my um, time clock to get sped up. Right there, that's good. Open up, go ahead, open, good. Good, that's good right there. I want to let him get in front of me. Go ahead, get in front of me. So I can put that hand on the back right there, kind of have the receiver control a little bit. Read him down. Good, you go in, I go in. Okay, oh, you go up, guess what? I go up. We still got the bracket on you. That's good stuff there by Eli Apple. Now you're going to see um, on this next one, you're going to see what happens when um, a guy tries to come back through you, right, when I'm in two men. And there are a lot of people, they're probably like, Hey man, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, he, he, he locked up Julio Jones on this play. Marshawn knows I got this safety right over the top. We're in two men. The base is a little, it's a little wide, but what does he do from the jump? Look at that. Open up. Go ahead. Oh, I, I can open up. You know why? Cause I, I know I have help over the top. I'm really just staying patient to get in a trail position. And if you try to come back inside, you're going to have to fight through me. He cuts the route off. He gets the interception. 
Yeah, no, I played this two man, baby. This is probably my favorite coverage. Mm -mm. You got to fight back through me. I know I have a safety over top. I don't, I don't have to be in a rush to get upfield. But if you try to come back inside, you're going to have to fight through me. Now, ideally, even in regular press, man, when I talk about wanting a receiver to have to fight back through me, this is what I mean. So even in regular press, man, don't get too far upfield shoulder. Make them have to fight back through you. Now, uh, you know, that's, that's ideal. It's not going to be like this every rep. But it should, two men should, there's no reason why, if I'm an outside corner and we're playing two men, there's no reason why I should be in any type of rush to get upfield. I should be, go ahead, run by me. So I can get in the trail position. But you're not going to be able to run a slant. I'm cutting that off. Coach, you got a question here. Uh, All right, and this is the, uh, that was the, oh, hold on one second before we get started. I want you guys to see how, uh, how uh, Julio Jones finished his rep off. Boom! That's what makes Julio, Julio. Mm -hmm. All right, and that was, the, that was the last one. All right, go ahead. Now, uh, what techniques would you use in, in, in a two reader palms coverage for corners? In a two read, like like what, like I'm reading, like uh, what like cover two. Coach, just elaborate on that real quick. Uh... Or am I reading like two to one? He hasn't he hasn't written back in yet. If you, uh, coach, if you, yeah, two to one. So um, ideally in a two to one, and he's talking about from a press, if I'm reading two to one from a press, typically it's more of a press bill. So I, you know, if this is what he's talking about, um, I typically want to line up a little bit more outside shade and on a press bill and open up to where um, I'm comfortable. I can, out of my peripheral, I can see one, but I'm reading through one right to two. And that's typically how I would, I would play that. Um, when I was with the New York Jets uh, for that time, that was one thing I learned, like, you know, Coach Rex Ryan, it was like, you can, you can, uh, and you want me, to, I can stop the screen share. I'm done with the film. Let me take this off. Yeah, you could do that. So then you can see the chat yourself. All right, here we go. So um, one thing I learned with Coach Rex Ryan, he, you know, he was always like, man, from pretty much any, unless it's like a sky cover three, you can play press in any defense. You just have to know what your reads are and how to read your keys from, you know, whatever alignment that it is that you choose to use. How can I, oh, is this a chat? Oh, okay, I see all the questions now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think most of them. Anybody have, uh, have any questions they want to drop in that chat? Coach can read them. Yeah, any questions, man? Any any questions? Yeah, I see somebody say, you know, he would Nick pick the hands, Marco Football Sixteen. Yeah, if you're gonna shoot both hands, yeah, you definitely can't can't miss. What is the best way to get noticed as a high school senior with no film? That's tough, but um, I would say camps. Right now, the camps are like, you know, just really like a big, a big thing. Camps are a really big thing. And uh, if you can go and lock somebody up <laughs> and especially go up to the big dog, right? You'll know who the big dog is there. Um, I coached a kid this year. His name is Raleigh Brown. Raleigh's a five-star uh, recruit. He's a five-star guy. Um, he has offers from everybody in the nation. He actually just transferred from my high school to Modern Day, you know, who's a big time. Modern Day might be the number one high school team in the nation. Um, so he just transferred from my high school in Stockton, California to Modern Day. But if I'm, a, if I'm somebody and I want to get recognized and I want people to know who I am, I'm going against Raleigh when I go to a camp. And all cameras are out when Raleigh is lining up. So I'm going to lock you up. And if I lock him up, like, okay, now, y'all might need to take notice of who I am. And I think if you don't have film right now, 
and into your senior year, that's the best way to kind of get noticed. We are closing, opening up and kick step. Where do you want the DB's eyes? Typically, um, I think they all work in unison, right? Um, my hands, my eyes, uh, my feet, they all work together. Uh, if you look too high, you know what I'm saying? If I'm looking at the head, a lot of times he's gonna be shaking and I'm gonna start shaking I'm, and my feet are gonna end up stopping. So that's the last thing we want. Just watch that midsection, man. Watch that midsection. Um, that's the thing that I, I look for the most when I'm impressed. Looking at that midsection, you see my eyes straight right there looking at that area. And even as he's going, again, that doesn't lie. The hips don't lie. Wherever the hips go, he's going. So I would say, uh, yep, yeah, I see, I, yep, hips don't lie. The hips don't lie. So wherever he's going, that's where I would, that's where I would, uh, yeah, I would look. The hips, the hips don't lie. They'll tell you where he's going. Don't, don't look up. Don't look up at his eyes. Don't look up at his eyes. Unless you're all the way downfield, and if you're not in phase yet, and you know he looks, that that might be a time when I guess you can. But at the line of scrimmage, uh, your feet, your hands, your eyes, they 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 all work together. A uh, good two man drill, uh, one of my favorite drills. Um, I actually had it as part of my indies, where I just have guys. Um, I do a couple of drills back to back. There's one where I have a guy trailing, and I have a guy kind of jogging. And as he stutters, the DB stutters. And he'll go again, he'll stutter, and the DB behind him, he stutters. And then um, we'll follow that up with where a guy, he's running off with a guy in trail, right? I have, a, I have the corner uh, trailing, this guy running, and he can stutter and then break right or left, and the corner has to be able to undercut it. So if he stutters, you stutter. If he goes and he, and he breaks right or left, you have to undercut it. And um, maybe those are drills. I have videos of it on my Instagram. Uh, they're probably far back because I haven't posted any drills in a while. But if you kind of look through, my Instagram is at, hold on, I'll type it right here. So if you go on my, if you go on my Instagram, you'll have to go back a little bit. But if you scroll through there, you'll start to see some, you know, different drills and stuff. Uh, favorite drills, I, I think some of my favorite, favorite, favorite drills. Uh, anything that, one, I really, I really emphasize eye discipline. That's probably like one of my biggest things that I harp on, especially with all of my drills. And then two, uh, I like to implement a lot of things that are change of direction. So eye discipline, uh, things that work change of direction. And, uh, and then also, um, What's the third one that I really harp on? Eye discipline, change of direction. Oh, and no wasted steps. And no wasted steps. So everything that it's, I, you know, I know some people uh, teach uh, uh, roadrunner steps or bicycle steps. Some te people teach uh, T-step. Uh, I don't mind. I know everybody's kind of a little bit different. Me, I was more of a natural T-stepper. Uh, there are some people that are, you know, are like pigeon-toed and <laughs> they can't really teach that. Um, I don't force what works for me on the kids. Uh, I, I just teach them, hey, if you're, if you're a T-stepper, then we have to really focus on getting you out of there as quickly as possible with no wasted steps. Same with the bicycle, uh, or uh, yeah, bicycle uh, uh, break. Uh, it has to be, if you want a bicycle, that's fine, but let's get those wasted steps out of there and make sure you get out as quickly as possible. So it should be one, two, and I'm out. Same thing with T-step, plant and go. Uh, when do you suggest speed turn? Don't, I don't like the speed turn. Uh, I, oh, when do you suggest to redirect or speed turn during press? You shouldn't have speed turn at the line of scrimmage. If you, if you speed turn, uh, if you speed turn from press, that means you were too far upfield shoulder. And you were too far upfield shoulder, he ran a slant underneath you, and you had to speed turn out of there. That typically shouldn't happen if you're a little more patient. Now, again, no, you know, all reps aren't going to be perfect. So, I, you know, I can see sometimes you, you need in a speed turn, 
but that's not something you really don't want to have to do that. As far as speed training in general, I'm not a big fan of it. I think a lot of times it comes with uh, uh, poor leverage. And typically if somebody gets too far ahead up on you, right? So um, I was going to go over what I call the leverage step. I didn't go over it today. But if I'm in off coverage and the receiver stems inside to get head up with me and then he pushes vertical and now we're head up, if he jabs left and then goes right, I'm probably going to end up speed turning. But if I leverage step to keep my same inside uh, uh, relationship with him, I shouldn't have to speed turn. So uh, I'm not big on the speed turn. Sometimes, you know, it's needed, uh, but it's needed really as a last resort. And if you do, you better speed turn and get right back on that dude's hip. Now, here's the dangerous thing with speed turning, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, show any clips of it. Maybe if we do it again, I'll do it. But receivers now are, are attacking guys' blind spots to make them speed turn just so they can go the other way. So you have to be really careful with the speed turn. Uh, Michael Thomas is really good at that. He attacks corners with really good patience, and he'll – He'll get it going and make it look like, oh, I'm going to go this way. The corner speed turns. And as soon as the corner speed turns, he goes the other way. And it just, you look real stupid. So um, be careful with the speed turn. Uh, uh, an athlete that lunges at receivers, get them at the line of scrimmage, uh, hands behind their back, and make them play with his feet. So I, I'll, I'll even tell a guy, look, I don't care, you know, because we did one-on-ones pretty much every day. Um, and I'll tell the kid, hey, for this entire one-on-one, do not use your hands. If you, if you use your hands at all, which, I mean, obviously we want to, but I, I'm trying to prevent a guy from lunging. Because a lot of times what happens when they lunge, they stop their feet, right? And we don't want them to stop his feet. So uh, uh, hands behind his back, play with, your, play with your feet, you know, and everybody, you know, all, all DB coaches, they'll tell you, man, feet before hands, feet before hands. If you are off in man, oh yeah, no. Um, if you are off in man coverage, uh, do you wear catch man or, or or slow pedal? You you can use both as a tool. Now, ideally, I play catch in or have my guys and I try you know, as much. I have some knuckleheads. We were really good, but we're knuckleheads. Um, but ideally, what it would be is, hey, if it's if we're sending a zero blitz, if we're sending a zero blitz, then you can play catch, right? So get about five, six yards off, play catch because the ball got to come out now because we got a zero blitz on. Um, and then if we're on the goal line, right, they're about the five-yard line, six-yard line, um, I want to pin my feet at the one. Again, I want to dictate the, the, the receiver's route depth and pin my feet at about the one, and I want to play catch technique from there, get hands-on, look through the receiver. I don't teach uh, reading the QB's drop because I wasn't taught how to do it. So <laughs> one thing about me, and maybe I'll watch some like YouTube tutorials of it. Um, I have had guys kind of show me a little bit. Um, I remember uh, Peyton uh, uh, Thompson. Uh, he played with the Falcons for a little bit, played with the Jaguars for a little bit. We trained together. Um, he tried to show me and I'm like, I don't get it. Then I have um, my guy, Dante Marsh. Dante Marsh, he played like 11 years in the CFL. I think he's going to the CFL Hall of Fame. Um, he's really big on keying the quarterback. Uh, because I teach more off coverage leverage step, I teach my guys to really key more of the guy's leverage first instead of the quarterback. So again, um, I'm not saying one way is right, you know, and one way is wrong. Uh, I, I just, I wasn't really taught how to do it and I don't know how to do it. So I, I typically won't, uh, have anybody do something that I, I don't really know how to do. Are, are there any other, any other, oh, okay, hold on. Uh, when should you use catch technique as opposed to rerouting a receiver in a slot? Um, ideally, I would like, my guys to be able to catch in the slot. Um, again, there's a lot more space. I don't want to give ground. Um, I'm really big on that, whether it's at the line of scrimmage or off, especially in that, because in the slots, they're not running too many vertical routes. But definitely if you're rerouting, 
it, it like like say if I'm you know in like a cover three or something like that, then definitely you, you it's more of a catch to reroute, get hands on, and then sink to your spot, depending on how you teach it. Um, I kind of like more. Uh, I teach a cover three, but it's 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 more of a um, I don't want to say match cover three, but kind of match uh, like pattern reading to where I, I teach guys to get hands on and you don't have to come off unless something comes into your area. So a lot of times I have guys, I know some people teach more spot dropping. You kind of drop into a spot and you're reading the quarterback. I teach more reading um, your keys. So, you know, if I'm in a slot and I have a guy like, go ahead, get hands on, but look at your key. Uh, 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 a good uh, term that somebody taught me, a uh, coach from uh, Lincoln High School in Stockton, he's the head coach now. Uh, Coach Howard, uh, visual key and uh, your physical key, your visual key. All right. So my 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 physical key that key that's the one I can touch. Right. So I want to get my hands on my visual key is the other guy. So I can get hands on here and still read my visual key. So with playing through the hands, my biggest thing is just get. The, I I want I want my guy like every single rep. Every single rep, attack the ball, attack the ball. So I don't, I don't care if you caught the ball already. I don't care if you're playing with your, around with your friends. You want to create good habits. I'm really a big, a big, big, big believer in everything that you do. Um, when you step on that field, you're creating habits, um, and it's a good habit or a bad habit. So even if I'm playing catch with my friends, right? I want to, you know, okay, we're playing catch, catch it, while looking all the way and tuck it away. Well, with the hands, every rep, one on ones, whatever. I always want to finish playing through the ball. So even if somebody catches it, okay, I want to reach and try to rip out. Even if I'm not in position to maybe break up the pass, I want to still get to the receiver, get my hand on his hip, and still rip at the ball. Good habit, man. That ball is going to come out. Um, I, I have my – I was screen sharing, and some of you guys may have seen my uh, picture in the background. I played with the uh, Portland Thunder in the AFL that year. But we forced the most turnovers uh, that year with his interceptions, or force fumbles because we ripped at the ball every single time. Just make sure your buddies are there. Somebody secure the tackle. Let's all rip at that ball. I'm pretty sure sooner or later it's going to come out. Catching points on catch man versus two, two wide receiver. We struggled with that last season. A lot of things like catch is tough. <laughs> catch is tough. I had somebody in here that was from um, OBU. And um, I played against OBU my junior year. And for whatever reason, our coach, so if, if you're able to go back to your junior, to my junior year, which was 2010 at OBU, I know you were there. You said you were there from 08 to 2012. Um, if you go to the game against Monticello, which was probably week three, maybe? Week two, week three? You'll see me out there playing catch. I had number eight on. And catch is tough it, it, from anywhere. So um, I think the main thing, Make sure that your feet don't get uh, stuck in the ground. You know, pop those feet, be, you know, activate them, and have really good discipline eyes. Really good discipline eyes. And again, kind of play like basketball, man. Play like basketball. Don't be a robot. No problem. Does anyone else have any other questions? There you go. Uh, have you ever seen or used inch back technique? Yeah, inch, feather, it's all kind of the same. Um, the biggest thing I would say is uh, don't, I don't want to create the space for the receiver. You dictate the route depth. You dictate that receiver's route depth. So even if you inch out, maybe this dude's quick, or maybe if especially inches really typically needed, like if I'm in a slot. But you, that's what that's what these young dudes got to have in their head. I dictate the route, the depth. I dictate it. Spacing is everything, man. Learn learn spacing. I had a good video on one of my pages with my guy uh, Brandon Thompson. Uh, he played uh, in the NFL, played a bunch of years in the CFL. He trains great trainer, great coach. Um, he really should be coaching at D1 somewhere or in the NFL. Great coach. Um, but he was talking about, like, we we dictate 
the route deck. We dictate the spacing. And no matter where I'm at, if I'm at the line of scrimmage or if I'm playing catch, the receiver has to run his route at a certain depth. And anything else he does that's outside of that, we, we need to dictate that. Two-hand jam versus I, – I don't like two-hand jam. Um, now, the times where you can use it, some people, again, uh, some, some people like to be more physical versus in two-man. So two-man press, if you're able to be more physical because you know you have somebody over the top, that's a time where you can two-hand jam. But typically, I would say no. I, I'm, you know, I would say shoot the inside hand. And if you have control with the inside hand, then I can bring my other hand. I said uh, uh, physical key is really, it's pressure key, visual key. I knew I was messing that up. Pressure key, visual key. Pressure key, vi visual key. Yeah, if you, if you miss, you're done in, in, in with two hand jam. And that's why the only time I would even say to do it is if you have a safety right over the top of you. Pressure key, visual key. Pressure, somebody can touch, visual key, what I'm looking at. I, I know he's here, I can get hands on, read my other key. Catch is off. So catch technique, I'm like five yards off, six yards off. Um, press, I'm at the line of scrimmage. Now, 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 here's one thing too, and I think sometimes it kind of gets all mixed in or lumped in together. Press and jam, so press, press is, a, is an alignment. So if I'm lined up at the line of scrimmage, I'm in press. But the, now jamming is, is, is something different. So even I know some people, why would you line up and press and not get your hands on? Press is just an alignment. I'm just right here at the line of scrimmage. I can press bell out from there, um, whatever. Jamming is actually like the technique that's used. Right. Can't, and the reason why you can't um, turn your hips uh, when you two-hand jam, because typically when I shoot my hands, my feet, they're probably going to be locked. Oh, yeah, we got anything else, y'all? I appreciate everybody, man, like logging in, man. Anytime I get a chance to talk some football, um, when's your next session in Stockton? I don't know, man, with this coronavirus stuff, I was supposed to get some stuff in this week, but this coronavirus stuff, man, has got everybody inside. And uh, I was thinking about getting a few kids together, but it's like, you know, they're ordering everybody to stay inside and, and kind of go to safe route. So right now I'm just kind of chilling. <laughs> Trying to figure figure this out like the rest of us. That's a fact, man. We're on the same boat here, you know. Yeah. But now, coach, I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you coming on. So, um, shoot, man. I mean, we'll see what next week is. But if you're willing to come back on and 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 talk that uh, that lever step technique that yeah. you had showed me, man, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll probably talk some lever step and then maybe some uh, divide rules, uh, cover three. Um, you know, the different ways you can kind of uh, play it. And, and, you know, that's definitely a reading a two to one. Uh, so, yeah, maybe maybe talk about some cover three. Cover three is one of my favorite coverages. So cool. outside of man, man's my favorite because man is just like it's me versus you. It ain't nobody else got nothing to do with nobody else. It's me versus you. Who, who's going to win this battle? So, man, that's my favorite. It's like, man, like, man, I got you. <laughs> I got you. So, man, that's, that's my that, – but outside of man, um, you know, just from a coaching perspective, uh, cover three, man, that's my favorite. You know, why um, Rex Ryan said something that always stood out to me. You know, we think of cover three as a, as a, a cover, like a, a, you know, a passing defense. But really, it's, uh, it's uh, cover three is really a run defense because now you have all 11 guys able to get their eyes to the ball. So, uh, yeah, cover three, man, is, is great versus the run. Um, you have more people kind of in the box. Uh, but also, man, when, they're, when they play right on the back end, it's a beautiful coverage against the pass as well. So. I'll have to uh, – we'll talk after this and, and figure out a day to get you back on here, man. Yeah, nah, for sure. Hey, man, no, nah, Vin, Vin, 
I don't know where Vance High School in North Charlotte, North Carolina, but I know one thing. California, we got two of the biggest dogs in the country, Modern Day and John Bosco. And who, uh, IMG, they then came out here and got smacked up. Uh, the team, who just came? There was, a, there was a big school that came out here and played Modern Day. They got smacked up. Where's IMG from? They from Florida? They got smacked up. So, you know, hey, I'm not saying Kelly has the best football players. I ain't saying that. When you talk about high school teams, I want to say we got number one high school team in the nation. 